very easy to, to turn the minds of a hostile nation because they're being primed with other problems, you know, and because right. Michael's legacy is still out there, very, very tainted, and, you know, I can see it sort of happening again. And I heard that, you know, a second pathology was done on his body, and they're trying to say that he had alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency syndrome, which is, you know, what they were alluding to, that he was going to die from six months before he did, and that they had some evidence of pulmonary hemorrhages on his lungs, and they're going to try and throw this up that, you know, as a defense also, that he may have died from natural causes. So here we have it that he sort of contributed, you know, sort of to his own IVs, that he may have died from natural causes, and it right. seems to me that they are both the exclusion clauses of who is to pay out, you know, sort of for the tickets, for instance, the tickets are 85 million for London, and, you know, they, they, that money is just returned. The merchandising is 25 million, so, you know, that's a lot of money. That's 120 million that somebody right. somewhere has to make a decision as to who's culpably responsible, you know, so, yeah. Right. Right, and and I hadn't heard about the second pathology, but I, d I did hear I did hear about the the original where they were trying to say that he had injected himself, which is ridiculous, um, and it, it, it's scary that how they're going to try to turn it around and make him seem responsible for his own death. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They really are they are, as I understand it, getting fluids from his body. Yeah, the, the fluids are still off in, in specimen containers, and they have um, allowed access to them. I, I think it's probably what they're going to do there is to say that, you know, sort of the level of propofol in the system possibly wasn't enough to kill him. And um, so I suppose they would be allowed that as a defense from the point of view that uh, they would be given independent laboratories to test the levels because certainly if the level came back that it was because the, the basis of the, uh, I suppose, prosecution is acute propofol intoxication. So mm -hmm. as a consequence of that, it would have to be above normal therapeutic levels to cause yeah. respiratory arrest, which probably happened rather than cardiac arrest. And um, so they would be entitled to independently, I would think, check that. You know, so if it came back, for instance, there's a difference between two laboratories, you know, the case could easily fall apart on something like that, you know, so... Well, that I know be. that they need to check the other drugs that were given to him in it uh, also. The interesting thing is, you know, sort of when Michael was with us in Ireland, without going into any of his medical conditions or anything as well, and, you know, I would never do that, but he also received propofol from us. But, I mean, the thing is that he would never do it in the absence of anesthesis, you know, and, I mean, and I have... Um, you know, good evidence of that, let's put it that way, okay. you know, if required. So, I mean, for somebody who, you know, sort of would not, you know, um, take, not even propofol, but midazolam or any, you know, sort of uh, of the other sort of um, benzodiazepine types w without an anesthetist being present, it, it beggars belief that within a two-year period that suddenly he would be, you know, sort of um, a self-injecting drug addict. You know, it, it just doesn't happen. Right, right. Know, which Mesero was the person mm -hmm. there that was doing this case. You know? I really do. Yeah. And not, not Mr. Oxman. Mr. Yeah, Brian Oxman's covering it uh, for um, Joe, Michael's father, but mm -hmm. um, Catherine has a, a different defense. Um, but, um, yeah. yeah, you know, there's going to be um, 2011 with cases. You know, the, I think that the Conrad Murray case will probably be more like a stalking horse from the point of view that they will uh, be testing the waters in terms of, this is from the family's point of view, what way the sort of, you know, the axe will fall. And um, then I'd say, it's like the O.J. Simpson case, the family will take a private, you know, sort of um, bill. And the fact that Catherine is coming in behind it now would mean that that would give it, you know, sort of a lot of credibility. And I think it would be in that period that any possibility of restoring Michael's good name, his dignity, and, 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 and leaving a good legacy behind, I think, will happen in, in that era, you know. Mm -hmm. I think during the first LAPD case, uh, this will be when um, all the mud will be thrown, and I think okay. we should prepare ourselves for that, you know. Yeah. Oh. And I Oh, I'm sorry, Catherine, were you going to ask a question? No, I just didn't just have to moan. Listen. Oh, okay. I, it, one of the questions I had, Patrick, was on the, um, on the propofol, um, it, from the autopsy report that I had read, at least, it had, there, there was, um, and I forget who it was, that, um, 
someone had come out, I think it was someone who had um, had experience with this. I don't remember the title of the person, but they had said that the amount given to him was enough, was the amount that you would give an intra-abdominal surgery and would require uh, um, resuscitative equipment and, and, and a breathing tube and all that. Um, well, I suppose there's a couple of things there. The first thing is the figures that um, Dr. Murray has put out that he gave him, you know, sort of, mm -hmm. I think it was 2.5 milligrams, would, would be so, you know, sort of small regarding, you know, sort of some of the sedative type medication that probably wouldn't be enough to induce or reduce in, insomnia very much. So I would think that we could probably only go by the serum levels of propofol, and I think there's some brain tissue as well that has been taken for sort of chemical analysis. Because, you know, anybody can say what I suppose they get in PO or IV, but, you know, the labs won't lie in terms of the serum levels. And I would think that those levels, you know, Deborah, must be high enough for LABD to put that down as the main form of homicide, that it was right. intoxication due to propofol. So I would think that probably there would be pretty firm evidence that the levels would be high enough to induce, okay. you know, sort of a respiratory arrest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no. Even if it were not, the, just the idea that they knew, he knew, the person can't, you know, with propofol, diprofan yeah. does not allow you to breathe. Yeah. It just shuts everything down. Right. So he should have been there helping Michael breathe. Yes. But he was out on the telephone. Yes. Uh, it, 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 know, does, it does all sound, you know, sort of incredulous. Mm-hmm. You know, the yeah, drug and and I, I thought to myself, I really have wondered, you know, uh, uh, as as Catherine, you know, says AEG had something to do with that. I really wonder if he, his girlfriend was connected to AEG or some something like that. Yeah, so I that suppose there's no doubt about it. Conspiracy so theories probably will abound for a long time. You know, and yeah, it is. It will, I'm sure. Yeah, and it is a good fit from the point of view that, you know, sort of a lot of people certainly made money out of Michael's death. But I suppose, as and, and will do for the next 10 years, but um, I suppose the, the court case, hopefully, will bring some sense of objectivity to it. But um, I'm not sure if we'll Nobody ever does that. No doctor, really hear that. No doctor would do such a thing. It has to be on purpose. I cannot think of any doctor... That. Nobody, yeah. No doctor would ever do such a thing, sure. would just leave you with with, um, with, some, with a drug running into your vein and go off and, and have a cigarette. And sit on I have to be very careful, of course, what I say, because if I'm called as a witness, I would have to right. maintain some sense of objectivity and credibility. And certainly, um, I would think that, uh, you know, you're... Um, expressed opinion there would be the correct one, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It would seem unusual that, you know, sort of somebody in that situation would. It's just that I know that I've been in that situation myself with Michael, and, you know, he refused it, and that's quite important, you know. And I have some um, uh, other, you know, sort of um, evidence of, of uh, that this probably may be potentially very vital, you know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, there'd be a time and place for everything, and... Um, I think that um, it's, it's going to be, you know, sort of an interesting period. There's no doubt about yeah. that. And you, it, do you mean he refused to, to have propofol or without an anesthesiologist? or Is that what you meant? I'm sorry, I was just trying to understand. Uh, yeah. Um, no, let's say I have some graphic evidence as well. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and is it true? It's true also that it, 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 I don't know if I'm saying this right. The benzodiazepines um, that he was given, those also, in conjunction with propofol, can cause the respiratory and cardiac arrest, right? Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, and accumulation of, of, of sort of, um, yeah, you know, sort of the benzos are all respiratory antagonists, and as a consequence, okay. the um, mixture you could have a, a synergy in existence, there's no doubt about it, that two and two might come to five rather than four with, you know, sort of particularly, I mean, midazolam and the propofol wouldn't be necessarily a good mix. But um, also people can, you know, build tolerances to these. And unless Michael changes into a totally uh, different person than I knew, it, it does seem to be, uh, to me, to beg a belief that suddenly, you know, sort of he would be dealing with this level of, uh, you know, medication. 
let's put it this way, and I certainly wouldn't be breaking any medical um, uh, confidentialities. In the six or seven months that Sergeant Michael was with us, I, I certainly um, um, may have written, written him one or two um, prescriptions, but none of them were ever for any drug, and none of them were ever for any um, uh, medication that um, would um, be given for insomnia. So uh -huh. I'm not saying anything but in the, in the negative, if you know what I mean. So I'm not breaking any confidentiality because I can certainly say with, you know, sort of um, a hand on my heart that, you know, yeah. in, in all that period, any script I ever uh, had written him was, was for very benign things, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, more for a cold than for sort of um, anything else, if you know what I mean. Wow. But, uh, See, that's, that's so important. It's just a shame people can't, you know, that because there's so many lies out there about even that now. Oh, it's incredible. And, I mean, he had total mm -hmm. access, you know, sort of uh, almost, you know, to get what he wanted. So unless he had a suitcase of medicines coming from somewhere else, I never yeah. seen anything in his house. I never r wrote anything for him, you know, and certainly uh, any time, you know, sort of I, I ever seen him, he sort of, you know, he was in his um, full um, mentality and certainly yeah. was never sluggish or anything, just, you know, sort of warm, loving and and fun, you know. He had a great yeah. sense of humor, you know. And, That's uh, what I heard, yeah. He was very funny. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he'd creep up with these things on the back of you that sort of, you know, that you wouldn't... Um, expect, you know, yeah. both in sort of practical jokes and in terms of um, one-liners, you know, okay. and, um, <laughs> and he could get into the culture of a, a country as well, and he was very intelligent, you know, this yeah. is a thing that sort of uh, didn't seem to come across as well, you know, to a lot of people, and a good guitarist, pianist, you know, yeah. and um, he had, um, I suppose, you know, uh, different intake or input into, you know, he could sit and tell you about Ireland in a way that sort of I wouldn't have expected. You know, he'd know about, you know, sort of um, history, you know, sort of um, surrounding the place he lived, you know, back maybe 2,000 years. Wow. You know, you know that, that, that type of thing in a way that even yeah. though I lived in Ireland, for instance, you know, sort of outside Grass Manor would have been the area where the high kings of Ireland would have been... Um, crowned right up, I think, to the, you know, the 7th or 8th century. I mean, I never knew that. He knew all that, you know. And it, well, I had heard that he was a very avid reader, that he read up on so many different subjects, and so he was very into history then, too. He was very into medicine as well, you know, oh, and okay. there's no doubt about it, you know, sort of, I have a nice library in the clinic, and, you know, sort of, um, he, he often wanted to um, deprive me of some of my better texts, you know, and um, <laughs> uh, any of the things he'd pick out would be about $400 books, you know, and he, he, I'd try and replace them with something. I said, Michael, you know, there's, there's nicer pictures in this one or something. And he'd look at me and say, you know I don't fall for that sort of thing, Patrick, you know. But it, it's funny, the sort of things he'd be looking at would be, you know, unusual. You know, it'd be like operations and, you know, sort of things like that, you know. And, um, but, wow. um, yeah, I mean, um, he, he was an avid reader, and the sort of um, things which interested him were a bit unusual, I would have thought, because you wouldn't have a situation where, you know, sort of the average patient would come in and be looking at, you know, sort of facial anatomy or, or surgery and know anything about it. And he would know a little thing, you know. You know, yeah. um, you know, you know you'd be discussing something like, you know, an artery or blood vessel, you know. Tell me the sort of um, dangerous, you know, places in a face. And I said, well, the mandibular thing runs there, and you know, the facial nerve runs along here from the ailer tragal line. Ailer tragal, you know, where is that now? That's the tragus on the ear, is it? Yes, you know. So it'll be almost yeah. like, you know, or you'd be, you know, sort of looking at a book with something, and to be, I don't know, you know, like an albatross or something, and he'd know the, you know, the genus and the species, you know. Wow. That's, you know, yeah, it was. Which is amazing, you know, sort of that, because it's not the sort of um, level of knowledge you'd expect a pop star to have, you know? Um, right, right. From the